Hey everybody, welcome to this week's live stream. <laughs> Sorry for the delay. I, I wanted to get going early and get on time and uh, of course the technology just didn't want to work with me. So anyway, we got the microphones, we got the cameras and I think everything's working at this point. So let's get started. So this week what we're going to do is we're going to cast some straws, uh, but these are made out of actual like coffee, I guess. Um, so uh, it should be pretty fun. So what I have in mind is we're going to go for stopper blanks and we're going to use a pipe. We're going to put about, let's see here, I think I got six. We're going to put six of these tubes in, but first we're going to pour all the resin in, then we're going to shove these, these straws in. And it should be pretty cool, I think. Um, I've actually already made some of these. Uh, these went into the subscription boxes this month. And I'm going to try and get a good shot of this. We So today's stream, we're going to cast some of these. So uh, before we get started, if you want to get in on the colors, we're going to be, this is going to be kind of a bang bang type deal. So if you want to get on, get in on colors uh, for these blanks, um, start doing the super chats now uh, because we're just going to do one round. Uh, I'm going to do a couple of these tubes. We're going to do them at the same time. And then we're going to cooking show style, uh, uh, you know, do, do a cooking show style thing. Um, I'm actually going to turn this one up. So it's going to be kind of cool. I, I haven't uh, done, I don't know, I usually don't do this type of thing. We're usually doing the experiment together. That's usually what I, I like to do. But in this case, uh, these turned out pretty cool and I'm really anxious to see how these things look. So I thought, let's do a cooking show style thing. So let's go over the overhead camera. So as you can see, it just, you know, it just looks like resin, but you can see the, the tubes. Now they kind of got a little bit, you know, wonky in, in, the, um, in the tube, but that's fine. It doesn't really matter, but hopefully you can see, yeah, you can see on the top, look at those crazy swirls and, and colors and stuff. I'm really hoping that this look goes all the way through. So it's almost kind of like you have this little outline with a honeycomb, but what's, what's gonna happen is, when you push this down into the tube, it kind of swirls the stuff up, all the colors. And so I'm thinking these are gonna be pretty wicked. I don't know, um, I, I, I've got, just looking at this, like that looks awesome. And you know, just as kind of a, an idea, if you wanted to get this kind of like pattern, you could like cut little slices out of this and like lay them down and you could make something kind of cool looking um, just using like thin you know cuts of, of these types of things obviously this what we're going to do is we're going to chuck it up on the lathe and we're going to make a bottle stopper out of it so it's going to be interesting to see once we cut into these layers what the the colors look like and all that stuff so um, I don't know. I think it should be kind of fun. Um, the other thing is we get to use uh, stainless bottle stoppers came out with some new uh, new stopper designs. And I guess that these work with some particular type of wine bottle. Um, these are the new ones. They have four uh, of these like O-rings. So let me go get one of the old style. Got a few of those too. These are the old style ones and they only have three. And I guess a bunch of people, like certain wine bottles, I guess work better uh, with, with these ones. So I don't know. Uh, I haven't really had any issues with these necessarily, but uh, let, me, let me go see if I can find what the deal is with the, the colors. Uh, I think they work on like a certain type of, let's see, I think they work on the, Let's see here. Let's see if this says anything. Nope, that's not it. Um, Dan told me uh, more more information about this, but I totally forgot. He kind of talked to me about it like at a... Let's see here. So... Uh, it fills the gaps of off-sized corked wine bottles, um, fitting 99.9% .9 of corked wine bottles, uh, including the smaller Italian wine bottles. Um, they're also fitting many of the screw top wine bottles. Um, and it says that these thrive in the 18 millimeter and 18.5 millimeter bottle openings. So I don't know, uh, like I said, I haven't really had any issues with it necessarily, but um, they came out with that because they had enough, uh, enough people uh, asking for something a little bit different that would work a little better. So uh, I get to use one of these guys. 
So I'll have to find one of those bottles uh, and, and try it out. Um, so we're going to use one of the four. Basically, it's the same shapes and all that kind of stuff. It just is. It just has the, the four O-rings on them. So we'll choose one of those. So let's see. who's Who got... I don't know. I think that I... Because I closed it and came back, I don't think I'm going to actually see who is here first. I think Mike McEwen might have been, but... Anyway, we got Paul's back. And Brian's here. Kim. Tony's here. Nice. Tenna? Uh, I'm not sure. You're chatting, no video, huh? Oh, okay, you got it. Cool. Tim's here. Nice. Um, and so, by the way, Tim, uh, we were we were kind of emailing back and forth. Um, one thing you were saying about the temperature thing with uh, he was asking about um, getting tight swirls, and uh, I was telling him that there's different ways to pour, and and I gave him a, a video to watch. But um, you still have to watch the temperature. That is kind of critical uh, to keep the colors from bleeding. Um, so just just to let you know, I did see that email, but I didn't have time to respond. Um, you do have to wait for that time you know if you if you start you know pouring right away all the colors are going to kind of bleed together so you have to wait for the right time but like i said um, watching that video um, should help a little bit with the tighter swirls I've, I've seen other people do it that way i don't pour that way usually um, but i think you can get tighter swirls with the alumilite clear so uh let's see here we got kim is in for some blurple. That's cool. So unfortunately, we're not going to be able to see the mix that we make today. Uh, you know, like uh, the, the blanks that we're pouring today. Um, these ones had, um, let's see here. I did silver, turquoise, and green are, are what these are made out of. Um, the, the, the one that I made before. So we're going to go for some blurple. Let's see here. Let's get things kind of rolling here. Um, I think we're going to put a little bit of the... Mm. Uh, I got a question for you, Kim. Do you want to add some of the starlight glitter uh, in with the blurple? That's always a tough question, you know. To, to glitter or not to glitter. That is the question. Um, no, yeah, they're not for whiskey bottles. They also have a liquor bottle uh, stopper. These are some, like I said, I don't fully understand. <laughs> He's like, we got a new product. It's kind of like the same ones we had. Uh, <laughs> I was like, okay, whatever. Um, so this is the liquor stopper. I have some of those and those have five O-rings. You can see it's a little bit different size. Um, and so this would be for like whiskey and you know, all those kind of things. So they, they have that as well. Um, I, like I said, I'm doing a terrible job selling this. So. <laughs> whatever they sent me some they're they're better uh mike's in for gold and burgundy red sweet tim what color do you want tim thanks for the huge super chat i appreciate it pick a color we can do whatever we want so on these what i'm also going to do again talking about the color separations and all that kind of stuff um we're going to wait for, uh, you know, the right temperature at this point. So it's going to be like, it's like 78 to 80 degrees in the shop right now. Um, at this point, and I fluctuate my temperature numbers. Um, when it starts getting warmer in my shop, I find that to get the same thickness, the viscosity, um, I have to wait till a higher temperature. Um, and, and part of this, like, you know, in the beginning, I used to use time. I used to kind of have a little timer and, and all this stuff. The problem with time is if you don't do things exactly the same, like the time is just, it's all over the place. I mean, you could literally be a minute off, which could blow your pour. So the temperature thing is a better way to go. But when your temperature's fluctuating in the shop, the problem is your jugs sitting on your counter in, in your shop, when it's like 68 degrees in here, this stuff is much thinner to start out with. And so I think that has something to do with that temperature. It's also cooler, um, you know, it's starting at a cooler temperature. And so I end up pouring usually lower, like 95 to 100 uh, when it's not, you know, 80 degrees in my shop. When it starts hitting like 80, I'm probably gonna wait till about 110, maybe even 115 on these 
because we're pouring them fairly deep. So I, I kind of fluctuate and the problem is I can't give you an answer as to what is gonna be the right temperature to pour. You're just gonna have to kind of you know, play around. And the other thing is depending on what kind of effects you want, you may want it thicker or thinner. <laughs> so it's tough, but you know, generally speaking with Alumalite clear and, and clear slow, this, uh, both of them are, are the same you are generally going to want to wait till over 95 degrees. That's kind of the bare minimum. Uh, and then when it starts warming up, you may find that it needs to be a little bit warmer. Uh, so Tim wants a, a bright green. All right, so, um, and just to let you guys know, I'm right in the middle of moving. Um, we're not the shop. Uh, the shop is a separate entity, <laughs> but I'm moving out of my apartment to a house. And so that's why I, I wanted to do this earlier. And we're going to kind of go a little bit kind of fast today. Uh, because I need to, the Monday is like the, the drop dead day. We have to have our stuff packed up and we got to be ready to move. So we'll be, um, I'm going to close out the, the color choices. And if you want to super chat to support the show, I appreciate that. But um, color choices are over. I'm going to hit these guys, these, these PVC pipes with some stoner uh, mold release. So we'll do that. We got some good colors. I think these are gonna turn out pretty cool. Um, and then, like I said, after we get done pouring this, we're gonna go turn a blank. That's kind of fun. Okay, so we got bright green. Um, I've got a pretty awesome bright green here, the apple green um, from Perlex. That's a, that's a nice bright one. Uh, we had a burgundy red. Uh, we'll go with wine red. I think is a little bit more on the burgundy side. I am right, right? Yeah, burgundy red. Um, Yakim, yeah, what is it called? Yakimoto? Yamagata? <laughs> Whatever. Um, that one's a pretty bright red. Um, but I think the wine, uh, wine red gets a little bit more into that kind of like a burgundy. It's a little bit more on the burgundy side. So we'll go with that. So we got that. We got blurple. We got gold. Um, I got to be honest, guys. I'm really happy with Olympic gold from P-Town. Um, it is one of my favorites. Um, I don't know if you wanted the 24 karat gold. I don't know that we're gonna get spectacular effects with that. I always have problems with that one. <laughs> it just doesn't do any, do what I, what I would like it to do. Um, so we'll go with Olympic gold. That way you can see what that looks like. It's just a nice, good general gold, I think. Uh, and we had one other, one other one, didn't we? Let's see, let me look at the, what's happening here. One, two, three, four. okay, four colors. So we got all four colors, perfect. And then um, these little stopper guys, you can get these at Turner's Warehouse. I think there's a link in the description. Um, either way, just use one of my links in the description if you wanna help support the show. It doesn't cost you a dime. It just tells Turner's Warehouse that I sent you over there, but just search for PVC, I think is actually a good search term on Turner's Warehouse to find these. They're with the PVC pipes and they also sell clear PVC pipes as well. Um, and uh, if you don't want the clear, you can just go with the white ones and they sell that too. So, um, and they got these plugs come in like from half inch all the way up to four inch. So it's pretty much got you covered on anything that you want to do. So let me get these, let me get this blank out of the way here. Oh, I don't need that chuck. I'm just going to pull the chuck off my lathe real quick while I'm standing here. Uh, here's a side tip, guys. So in my advanced years, I'm finding that it's hard to see something. So I need to get readers. And, you know, if you go to like CVS or so like a pharmacy or, or, or certain places, I haven't checked like Walmart, I guess. But um, a lot of these stupid readers are like 20 bucks. And I'm like, okay, are you kidding me? These are stupid glasses. Do you know what? Home Depot sells readers with all the different like, uh, you know, like one and a half, two, three, whatever, um, for $5. I'm like, okay. So what do you guys think about that? And I had to, I, I bought some that were like super, like uh, super high magnification. And it turned out that was absolutely the wrong thing. I needed it to like right in front of my face still. Um, but this one and a half uh, on the lathe, I can actually see details now. So my turning is going to get even better because I can see what I'm doing. I don't know how that works with safety glasses yet, but anyway. <laughs> so, uh, 
was a learning experience. Nice. Yeah. Made some wedding rings. Nice. You don't, you don't own a credit card? That's fine, man. I don't mind. <laughs> no problem, dude. You're better off, probably. Okay, so we're going to switch over to the overhead cam and get this thing rolling. So I got my little notebook here. So the date is July 8th. Hope you guys all had a good 4th of July. Um, ours was pretty quiet. The The one big uh, big deal for, <laughs> for me was I, I went and got some ice cream. I like to have ice cream. That's, that's pretty American, right? Ice cream on the 4th of July. All right, so we're doing uh, coffee. And uh, I have links to the coffee straws in the uh, description of this, this live stream or video or whatever. So if you want to pick some of these things up, they're pretty cheap, I think. Um, I can't remember. I bought them a long time ago, and they actually screwed my order up and, and sent me the wrong thing. But um, So not entirely sure, but... Um, oh, one other, one other note. Okay, so normal straws. Do I have any? I probably don't because... Uh, I don't know. You, you guys know. So like normal plastic straws, they suck <laughs> for casting because the, the resin doesn't stick to them. Now, these things have kind of a rough surface and it's coffee, it's not plastic. So the hope is, and that's another reason why I wanted to turn this blank today, the hope is that the resin is going to stick to this extremely well. And it, sh it should. I have no... Um, I, I don't think that there's going to be an adhesion problem. We'll find out, but these should work pretty good. I I hope. Coffee straws uh, stopper. All right, so we're doing um, two times one and a half. I can't write one point five inch PVC pipe. I'm going to go with two hundred grams. I'm, I'm. This is about six inches or so. Uh, and one thing to note, it doesn't necessarily matter, but the bottoms of these are kind of crooked. I'm thinking that, you know, when you, these are meant to be like a boba tea um, straw for like, you know, the little bubble things. Um, and I think that what, what the reason that it's, it's like that is that in your cup, if this, if you're using it for a straw, you don't want it to be like flat on the bottom of the cup. You want it to have kind of an open thing. I don't really want that in my blank though, so I'm gonna put them in upside down. I think I kind of forgot when I did these the first time, but um, so just to let you know about that. Two times one and a half inch PVC. So again, it's about six inches or so. We're gonna go with a, a 200 grams. For each tube, that should fill it up, I, I hope. Um, We're using Alumilite Clear Slow. Oh, I cannot write or do anything. One and a half inch, we're doing that. Okay. So, we've got four colors. We've got 400 grams total that we're gonna mix up. Again, 200 per pipe. So 400, okay, so it's 100 grams for each color. I don't need a calculator to do that math. So we're doing 100, 100, 100, and 100. We're going to go with Apple Green by Pearl X. And for stoppers, you don't need to load up the powder as much as for pen blanks because we're not going to be turning it down to a super thin thing, you know, where you drill out the center of the pen blank and all that. So you, you can get away with a little bit less. You don't need to just completely load them up. Um, so for the most part, whatever you see in the cup generally is going to be kind of what the blank looks like. Um, that's not true for pen blanks, though, like I said, because you drill out the center and then you turn it down to such a thin amount that there's just not enough part you got to load up the amount of particles of mica for that small thin amount you have to overdo it kind of so i think we'll be fine with like a quarter teaspoon of each of of, of each of these colors we're going to go with wine red quarter teaspoon we're going to go blurple um quarter teaspoon we're going to add 
a drop of violet dye. Oh, I didn't see. Did Kim want the... Let's see here. Do you want the um the glitter in there? Hmm. There, okay, so uh, Okay, yes, yes please. Okay, plus we're gonna do a scoop of um uh this and this is the starlight glitter I sell on my website. Kind of the chunky stuff. I also sell a micro starlight, which is like fine, finer particles. Uh, and we got Olympic gold. And that's going to be another quarter teaspoon. Okay. I got to open this wine red. Do I have a small one? I do. Okay. I was prepared for the future. Let me get some gloves on. And then we'll mix up some resin. Oh man, this move is crazy. We've, I feel like I've been moving for like ever because I've been, we already have the keys. So I've been kind of slowly moving stuff for like a month. <laughs> it's fun. The tough thing is I'm, I'm like looking forward to Monday because that's the, you know, that's when we actually are moving our the stuff in our actual apartment where we where we're living now into the house but then the problem is it's not like it's done it's just now our stuff's there now we got to figure out where to put it all put it all away and organize so it's, it's gonna be a this is gonna be a long summer <laughs> Okay, so 200 grams of part A. We're getting there, there we go. 200 and a little over, no problem. Nope. Zero that out, 200 grams of part B. Perfect. Okay, so we're, we're gonna mix up all the resin in one cup and then dump it off into smaller cups. Let's see, I don't even think I need, I'm actually gonna pull out some, I have some paper cups. I think we're gonna work, let's see, 100 grams. I think they'll work pretty good for this. And I'm actually gonna, so one thing, I'm actually going to dump it all out too, okay? We're going we're gonna to dump it into four smaller cups because the problem is if you leave just 100 grams in this big cup, then what you have is a, a, a spread out amount, small amount of resin compared to what it would be in these cups, all right? So it's better to, it's better to have like you know, like like a, a smaller mass, like taller and skinnier of resin, it's gonna heat up faster than a short, wide one, all right? So it's kind of the same, like if you, if you just poured the resin out on a countertop, it's gonna take forever to set up, you know, if it was a super thin layer, but if it's closer together, it's gonna heat up faster. So we're gonna dump these guys off into smaller cups. These ones actually, I don't, I'm not loving these guys either. We're gonna go with these plastic ones. These are these will work better. I don't think I have a paper cup that's th this size. Paper cups are generally cheaper, and for this, it's not like a big deal. I I kind of like the. It's kind of weird because I've been I've been casting for so long, and I have like habits, muscle memory, and so sometimes for certain things, I really don't want to switch cups. Even <laughs> like, it just feels weird, you know. So. You get these habits. It's hard to break sometimes. I also like plastic cups generally. Uh, I started using the, the clear plastic cups a lot because I was doing videos and it kind of 
doing it in a paper cup is not particularly eye pleasing you know you can't see anything a lot of times um, and you don't even need clear pvc pipes necessarily but you know sometimes it can help with pores being able to see what's going on but clear pvc is more expensive than just the standard white and you can just pick up the white pvc at like a home depot or wherever so just a some thoughts but like i said it, it can be a little bit helpful sometimes being able to see in there tim was turning all day on the fourth that's fun all right so let's i'm just gonna get one to a hundred you, you don't need to these don't need to be like dead perfect you know with the number of grams they don't have to be equal i'm just going to get one and then use it as a like a guide to get it in the ballpark Now one thing to keep in mind, if you are going for a very specific amount of resin, um, you may want to overshoot it because what's going to happen is I'm going to leave some in the cup here. It's going to be on the walls of the cup. You just, you can't scrape it all out, you know? So sometimes if you're doing this where you're, you're going to dump it into a different cup, like all of it, uh, you might want to overshoot, you know, add a little extra resin to your mixture. Uh, so that you can get it you know filled because like say for instance you know with these these are stoppers and and I'm not gonna be super angry if, if they're a little short or something but I'm pretty sure we can get two two stoppers out of each one of these no problem um, but let's say that I wanted to get six out of it or something like that and if you're short then you may only get five blanks and like a half uh, so just some thoughts you know it's, oftentimes it's it's oftentimes better to overshoot your resin amounts. All right, so we got our green. Uh, and sometimes if you want to, you could, you could toss your mica powder in the cup first if you're worried about time or anything like that. I think we got plenty of time today. We're gonna have to kind of sit and wait for it to warm up anyway. But we got our gold. These are gonna be colorful. And we got some blurple. I'm just going to put a little scoop of this stuff in here. Put all these guys away. Boom, 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 boom. Get these guys mixed in. Trying out some chameleon powders, nice. Yeah, that's basically, that's what the, the blurple stuff is. Color, like color shift or chameleon, or it's all kinds of names for these things. <laughs> that's why my turning is bad. Ah, Walmart, nice. Dollar Tree has them? Oh, man. I really hate Walmart. I don't like that store. <laughs> so, it's just, every single time I go in there, it's just, I don't know. 
Not a big fan of it, so I usually stay away from Walmart. I'll have to check out that Dollar Tree thing, though. I don't know if we have... I think we have one somewhere. Not sure. Yeah, definitely close enough for government work. All right, so this is what the... The blurple looks like before we add uh, the violet dye, which, I mean, this is kind of cool too. Um, and so the way these color shift things work is it depends on how the light hits it. It's either going to look kind of more blue or more purple. I like to add a little violet dye to this because it just pops it. Um, and, and this uh, color shift powders, well, there are some that are like actually like tinted. I find that those don't particularly work that well uh, with resins. I haven't found one I like, I guess. I don't know. Maybe I don't know how to use them. But, so just one little drop. But all of these uh, color shift powders and also with the interference powders, dark backgrounds pop the color. And so by adding a little bit of violet dye, you're, you're darkening you know, the resin itself and allowing that. You still get the blue to to purple color shift though in there. It just looks a little bit more on the purple side, you know, because you've added that dye. Let's see where we're at here. So we're at 99. We're going to go to like one. And actually that that's, this is a big, big deal. I got to add my, my temperature. Uh, we're going to go to like, I think we're going to go to 115. So when these hit 115 Fahrenheit, and I also write down what the temperature is in my shop, because that's, extremely important as well. Um, just saying that you dumped it at 115, if it's only 68 degrees in here, that's going to be way different. It's probably going to be setting up, honestly, at that temperature, if it was only 68 starting out, you know, in my shop. But being 78, 115 is not really a big deal. It's going to be thick, but that's what we want. All right, so we got our things there. Got these guys. Um, this cup. It can be a little helpful to. It's uh, not big enough to use a cup or do you put the put the PVC pipes in something so they don't fall over in your pressure pot. <laughs> you know? There we go. It just that way they, they're not going to tip anywhere and it's much easier to get them in there you don't have to worry um, you can make like a rack or something like that too if you wanted one thing that can kind of help keep the colors from like really bleeding together is like putting a I don't have a long, really long enough stick, but putting, well, that'll, that'll work. You put a stick in there and that way it's kind of running down at a slower pace. It can get a little bit messy, but kind of works a little bit. I think we're gonna go without, just kind of see how these things turn out. Oh, <laughs> nice. Yeah, well, I gotta be honest. All every one that I've been to, I just I don't like them. We had them in Vegas, and they were just I don't know. Oh, we're at one eleven. So one thing to also kind of look at is you can also just look at what the consistency is. All right. Oh, we're going to one one fifteen. Just kind of see how how fast is this stuff running off of the stick. Um, this also helps you to kind of understand, you know, what if you kind of visually know what the consistency is that you're looking for. Then, let's say that your thermometer thing broke or something like that. 
or it was reading wrong, um, this will kind of help you out to just know, even without a temperature gauge, like what, you know, what are we looking for for, the, for this pour? And the more you do this and kind of have an idea, you know, the, the easier it is. Now, I still use the temperature gun because it's more reliable than me just using my eye, but it does help to kind of know, you know, what's, what's going on here with the, the viscosity of this stuff. All right, so now we're at 116, we're gonna go for it. And I think the thing is with these, I'm not particularly worried about what everything looks like or if it bleeds a little bit or if, you know, we don't need to worry about swirling it or doing anything because the, the straws are gonna do all the work for us. That's kind of the hope, you know? I'm trying to get these two cup or two pipes to be fairly even. I think we're going to fill them. I'm hoping kind of, but oh, I need to do some green here. Or at least pretty close to full. Getting pretty thick, guys. But you want that thickness um, partly because when we push the straws in, that stuff's really gonna, you know, move this stuff around. And so if it was not, you know, kind of at the super thick point, you'd have a lot of color bleed when you push these things in. And we'll have to kind of see, you know, I don't exactly know. Let's see, one, two, three, four, five, six. I don't exactly know how these are gonna turn out, but. One, two, three, four, five. And I'm just kind of pushing them down in there. Gotta watch out; it'll it'll kind of want to overflow it a little bit. You don't want to push too hard. Or too fast, let's say. Okay, we got that one down in. That one's buried, and that's all you got to do. And that should, you know, mix this stuff up quite a bit. And, and give you some pretty cool looking results. So I'm gonna get this in the pressure pot. And as always, uh, let's see, let's go with this camera. and kind of see what I'm doing over there. Somewhere. Okay. And there we have it. And so these are gonna to need to stay in the pressure pot for a minimum of two hours. Yeah, two hours is probably good, two or three. Um, especially depending, you know, especially given the temperature in my shop. Two hours should be plenty. And we can pull them out and um, I generally wait um, a couple days before I turn, I mean, realistically, I've actually, you can turn these things like the next, or you know, like the same day if you wanted. Thing is, it's gonna be super um, soft. So, which, I mean, you could turn it, but I don't think you're gonna get the best results. Um, the big thing is though, you know, give it, give it a day or two um, and you'll be fine uh, to turn it. Everything will be, you know, perfectly fine, but um, for the final polish, um, it's best to wait the full cure 
schedule or you can also heat them in an oven there's like a full on full on curing you know post curing baking schedule um contact the the resin manufacturer to find out what you know this the the post cure schedule is you want kind of the right temperature and the the timing and all that kind of stuff i don't really do that um because i i just haven't had time to like really play with it and i haven't needed to do it usually um, but you can post cure these things to speed up that cure generally it takes like eight hours at 150 degrees fahrenheit or something like that i just don't mess with it personally um, but uh, for alumilite clear the the full cure schedule just like at room temperature is going to be five days um, and at that point it is fully hardened and you're going to get the best polish one you know at the the hardest point that it can get to so i usually you know try to recommend that now I get away with doing stuff, you know, you can get things polished up. It's just, it's going to be a little bit harder and you just might not get the best polish on it. You know, is kind of what I'm saying. It's not like you can't do it a little, little bit earlier than that, but better to, uh, better to wait. All right, let's see here. Yeah, I got the, there's a link to the straws in the description of this video. Uh, but I got them, yeah, on Amazon. There's different sizes and stuff too, so kind of keep an eye on, you know, if you want to get the same exact ones, make sure that these are like the Boba T ones. Um, I, that's all that I can kind of remember offhand. So now, at this point, we've cast some. Now we're going to turn one up, so cooking show style so i already made one this one's got green turquoise and silver in it did it the same exact way um, so we're going to go over to the lathe and see what this thing actually looks like on the inside I, i'm pretty excited so let's switch over to the the lathe cam i got my stainless this is the universal mandrel from stainless bottle stoppers i love this thing um, it has so for anybody that doesn't know what the deal is with this thing universal mandrel i think if, if you're in the market even if you already have one i would highly recommend uh, picking one of these up because the deal is they have these bushings that are they have, it's like kind of like think of like pen kits um, they have different bushings depending on the the kit you know the, the hardware that you're doing so this bushing fits it's like the same size as these stoppers right so i that way i have a an idea of where to turn to um, you don't need that, but in some cases you really kind of do. So that's the universal manual. You can get it at Turner's Warehouse or StainlessBottleStoppers.com. I think they're fabulous. They're it's a, and it's well made. It's it's a good um, stopper mandrel in general. Definitely, if you're if you're look if you don't have one and you're you're looking for a bottle stopper mandrel, get this one. Um, even if you already have one. Eh, you might think about picking one of these guys up. Just makes things a little bit faster, you know? Okay, so we got this thing here. I got some safety glasses there. Uh, I'm going to fire up the air, the air conditioner. Wish I had an air conditioner. The dust collector. Let's hope this a little bit. Get that guy right like that. And there. All right, let's do this. So this is going to be a quick turn. I'm not going to put a lot of embellishment in this. Um, like I said, I do have <laughs> got to get home to continue the packing. Um, I'm going to switch out. I have a, a regular cutter in right now. I'm going to switch that out for a, a negative rake. Love me some negative rake. So we're going to be using the Easy Wood Tools Easy Finisher, or I, I don't know what this is, Mini Finisher tool, and the negative rake round CI3. Get all these things at Turner's Warehouse as well. Get this thing spinning.
And let me turn on my phone so I can see what you guys are saying. Uh, I think the mandrel is self-tapping. I don't do that. So just to let you guys know, what, what I do, um, and I highly recommend this. I used to not do this. I would just tap threads into the resin, but I gotta be honest, it's just way better to use these inserts. Um, it, it just, you're never gonna strip the threads out. So all you do is you drill a five, uh, a half inch, uh, you know, use a half inch drill bit and it's about five eighths deep into the blank and then just epoxy this guy in. Uh, it just, honestly, it's the best way to go. Add a little tailstock support here. There we go. Speed it up. And let's make some shavings here, guys. Now again, I'm hoping that these things, the straws and the resin bonded well. If not, we're gonna get some chip outs and all kinds of fun. <laughs> I really don't anticipate that. All right, got it rounded. I think I'm gonna stop the lathe real quick so you guys can see. Give me a blue Peter. Here's one, <laughs> Here's one I did earlier. Oh, got some interesting stuff going on. I don't know what that is. There's like vertical lines in here. I don't even, is it the straws? Oh, it is the straws. That blank was pretty off kilter. That's interesting. So, uh, can you guys see the, let me, let me zoom in a little bit. I might have to, yeah, you can kind of see that. So these lines are the coffee straws. And I don't feel any, you can't, there's no cracking or anything. Ah, oh, that's interesting. Okay. Zoom you guys out a little bit. So I'm just going to kind of come in here and then uh, probably just... Probably just kind of round it. We're just going to go for kind of a simple shape here. Let's get this guy up in here. Give me some collection. Oh, I see what the problem is. I was like, why is this thing not working? You gotta close the, the, the super huge vent. There we go.
so I wasn't going to do a whole lot of shaping, but I really wanted to see, I wanted to get in, uh, you know, further at some point on this thing. So I decided to call an audible on that. my new readers. Uh, I think that's good actually. I'm going to try to start with some 240 grit. I think I got some bumps and tool marks that I'd like to get out. So we're going to go with the Abernet to start and just try to clean everything up.
Okay, now the tough thing is you really want to do the side to side or you know whatever lengthwise. And that's, that's dust collection is loud. Let me just crack this a little bit further. There we go. I feel like I have to yell because I can't hear when I'm can't hear my own thoughts. It's always good to give it some, I like to call it cross grain sanding, <laughs> even though there's no grain, but doing it against the, the, the grit that you, you know, the, the sanding marks that you put in originally, it really helps you to get the best polish. Sometimes you can get away without it, and sometimes when I'm kind of in a hurry or lazy, I'll skip it. And it's, but I find it's kind of a crapshoot if I if I don't do this between grits, basically. But it's really tough on your fingers. So, and wrists, tiring. I'm gonna call that good. I also like to wipe it off. I use a little bit of denatured alcohol in between grits just to make sure that if any particles from the sandpaper are still on the surface or whatever, uh, it's not there anymore after I've wiped it off. All right. Now I'm gonna to move to, this is 400 grit, this is the gold, gold flex. This is kind of nice stuff because it'll conform pretty well to these different, you know, contours. And, but also I'm not, this, the foam makes sure that I'm not putting too much pressure on it. looking pretty good. I'm just going to do a little bit of, you know, once again, I'm going to do that with the grain. Now, one thing to talk about is I'm not certain 
if moisture is gonna break down those coffee straws. So, I would probably recommend uh, putting a, a CA finish on top of this thing. Just to make sure. Uh, especially, you know, you start putting it around alcohol and, you know, that's, that's going to probably break down whatever the coffee straw stuff is made out of a lot faster than water would. So I think, I think it's probably the best way to go. So I'm just going to sand up to 400. Do a little bit with a, a 500 pad. Just to kind of get, get some of the 400 grit scratches out kind of even everything out so there's not a bunch of scratches going around it. Uh, and then go for the CA finish. So this thing's looking pretty awesome just after sanding with the 400 grit. I'm gonna zoom in for you guys. Try to get that to focus. Oh, look at that thing, I mean, that's pretty sweet. These patterns are just really cool looking, They're kind of diamond things. wipe that off again with some denatured alcohol. Now, I'm wiping it with denatured alcohol too, so <laughs> I don't know. I don't know if this is bad for those coffee straws or what, but I'm not seeing any issues so far. I'm not feeling any difference, you know, any cracking or separations. All right, now I have this pad that's just 500. I'm just gonna kinda sand around, like do it by hand. Let's see, I'll show you what I'm, where the heck is that 500? Hmm. Let me put the 240 back. One of these days I need to clean up this side lathe thing. That's 2000. Hmm. Uh, there it is. There's my 500. So it's just another kind of padded, you know, padded sandpaper. And I'm just going to kind of go around in circles here just to kind of break up any visual straight sanding scratch marks, you know. And this one's even softer, so conforms to the contours lets me kind of get in there but it's not 
very uh, aggressive, let's say. Alright. I'm going to wipe it off one more time before we put the CA finish on. I like to leave my, my dust collector running when I put CA finishes on uh, because it uh, sucks the fumes, you know? Alright, so... I think we're gonna go with the medium. I'm gonna try medium flex. Actually, first thing I'm gonna do is hit it with the super fast thin. Just in case there are any little crack areas, that'll kind of soak in to those things. All right, and I, I like to I rip a piece of paper towel and then triple fold it or whatever this is. And I find that I don't really get CA glue on my fingers, typically. And I'm not even going to hit this with accelerator. I want it to soak in, basically. Let's see what the chat's doing here. You guys awake? <laughs> wow. That thing is pretty wicked. I mean, that, that thing looks like, like blown glass or something. It's, that's pretty cool. Yeah, I'll, I'll be keeping this thing on hand. I don't really, I mean, honestly, I've cast pasta. And as long as you cover it with something, I haven't seen it just degrade. You know, as long as you've got it sealed pretty well, should be good. All right, let's see if this thing is dry. I use the back of my finger just because it seems less... I don't know. There's less oils on the back than, than not like your, the pads of your fingers. I just just try it out, see what happens, and go from there. And it looks all dry to me. So we're gonna try the medium flex for Mercury this time. It has a little bit longer working time. I can kind of rub it in a little bit more, I think. And just to let you guys know, these the, the medium and the, the uh, thin flex, these are meant to be used in conjunction with the accelerator. It's just how they work.
and that's dry. thinking that that might be enough. One more coat might be a little better, but I don't know. I, I'm kind of thinking that might be plenty. It just depends on how much sanding I have to do, really, but I did seem to get that on fairly fairly smooth so let's give it a shot here so first thing I'm going to do is actually sand with this uh, 400 grit just very lightly just to try and knock down some of the grooves that I might have put in there I think we're going to switch over to the wet sanding. We'll see. Like I said, I, I think if you want to be absolutely certain that you know everything's sealed up properly, you'd probably want to put a couple more coats on. But I'm kind of in a hurry today, so <laughs> let's see what we can do here. I'm going to switch up to the wet sanding now. Let me get some new new papers out. Get some fresh sandpapers. This is the Zona paper. Get this at uh, Turner's Warehouse. This is in the, the neighborhood of something like a 750 grid or so, 700. All right, I'm going to wipe it off and just see what this looks like. Generally, you can see when you've sanded through CA finish. I'm going to get my fancy new glasses out. Oh, man, so fun. Okay, so everything looks good. There's There are some sanding scratches still though they're going around it so I want to hit this a little bit longer with the green 
and hope I don't go through. I'm gonna take the safety glasses off and just use the glasses. See how that goes. Okay. So the key to a good polish is you gotta get the surface nice and smooth and get all those previous grit scratches out. Then it'll look like glass. All right, let's dry it off again and see where we're at. That's looking better. That's looking nice. Okay, we're gonna move up to the gray. I'm going to do the wipe it off again and take a peek real quick. That's looking good too. So we're going to move up to blue zona. And we'll hit the, the magic juice. Okay, I'm calling that good. It's magic juice, this thing. All right, now magic juice is a plastic polish, six steps. Uh, and if you're looking for a new polishing method, they do have a trial pack, sample pack thing at Turner's Warehouse, and I think it's like 15 bucks, so. If you're getting good results, then I wouldn't mess with it, but you know, with whatever, with, with the method that you're using now, but if you're like, oh, I don't know, maybe it could be better, give her a shot. All right, so here's the stuff. I need to go get, I'm gonna go get some of the blue Scott paper towels. They're a little less abrasive. 
than the white ones. What's up, Dominic? How's it going? I like to kind of rub it in first, usually. Get it spread. Might have used a little too much there. That's okay though. Not gonna hurt anything. We'll just polish it some more. I'm going to get a fresh area on my paper towel and just wipe off any residue. And even after the first step, I'm always like, whoa, you know, <laughs> stuff works pretty good. All right, so step one, done. Now, I find step two tends to be sticky kind of so you might need to put a little bit more pressure on this or else it kind of tends to wrap up the towel kind of tends to want to grab and this is exactly why I don't recommend using any you know like a, a normal cloth or fabric even the you know I really like the microfibers but even those they're not going to rip if it grabs and so it just I think you're best off using a paper towel for safety Okay, so moving on to step three. Oh, hitting the, hitting the camera there. Yeah, I know, the magic juice is pretty good. I was super skeptical at first. I was like, right, magic juice. It's going to be so magical. And then I tried it and I was like, mm, I got to be honest. This is working better than my method. Um, I still use the buffing wheels sometimes. Um, the buffing wheels will take out scratches more. So if I got something like, like a black blank or, I don't know, something where the scratches are just seem to be persistent, I can't seem to get them out, then I will go to the buffing wheels because they are, uh, I'm able to get scratches out. And, and for larger turnings and stuff, you know, this stuff is not really the best option, I don't think. Um for pens, stoppers, and all this stuff, definitely my go-to. All right, step three, done. Let me get my bottles out of the way here. On to step four.
once you get past step uh, step two, it's all downhill. Step two, that that can be a can be a bugger. I love step five. It's gray. Okay, and for the final step, number six. I can already tell this thing is shiny. Woo! All right, I'm gonna get you guys in angled correctly for the big reveal. Ooh. Focus on it. There we go. Here we go. Oh, oh man, it's so shiny! I can't even see. I need glasses, sunglasses. Woo! Wow, that's pretty cool looking. I'm gonna try and get a non-glary. Uh, I don't know if this will work. There's just really no way to get the glare out of there. Wow, that's looking pretty good. I'm pretty happy with this thing. Let me switch this back up somewhere. Where was it? there I think mm. angle this down now and pop it off the lathe kind of hard to Get the top of this thing. There we go. Get a little light on it. Look at that. Dang. Pretty sweet. If I do say so myself. All right, so let's get one of these newfangled four, four O-ring bottle stoppers on this guy. Question is which one? Kind of thinking Kind of thinking I like this this round thing. I think we're going to go with that. Seems to kind of match the quirkiness of this thing. Let's zoom out a little bit. So and so there's the insert, like I said. I really I'm I'm to the point where I, I really think that's the best way to go. One thing I'm gonna do, there's probably a little bit of a lip CA finish like right on the edge. I'm just gonna break that kind of 
softly. I usually try to grab a piece of like thousand grit or you know something like that. And I usually use like the actual sandpaper. Carefully, I'm just gonna kind of go over the edge. I think it's just not really doing what I want, so I'm, I'm gonna make it even smaller. Just round it over. I don't want to scratch the surface here. I want to make sure there's no lip. Okay, I'm going to blow that off. Now. Ooh. That's pretty sweet. I do like the four four rings. That's cool. All right. Dang. Pretty happy with that one. I like the colors too. Good color choices. So we're back over here, just in case. I, I, it's kind of hard for me to see what's happening on the screen. I'm gonna do this upside down. I'm trying to get my fingers out of the way. I can zoom in also. Might help a little bit. Yeah. The only problem with this one is it doesn't stand up on on a desk. They have other ones that, that like stand up. So actually I'm gonna bring the Hulk. I think they sent me one of every one. Maybe two of everyone. Let's let's go back to this camera here. So you got kind of just a point. That could be cool too. I kind of I I kind of like this one the best anyway. But um, but they also have these ones with uh, kind of a foot, which is kind of nice because then you can you know you, if if you weren't using it, you could just kind of stand it up on your desk or your counter or whatever. You know, which is kind of nice. Oh, look at this one. Yeah, I kind of like that one. I don't know. What do you guys think? I like the standard, the, the old school bottle stopper thing. I think I'm going to go with that one. All right, guys, so pretty cool. Uh, I, I actually didn't, I wasn't sure what to expect, I guess, really. Um, these, those kind of crazy like V patterns or, or diamond shapes from the coffee straws. I mean, that's just really cool. I, it, it, it's something that I didn't even, you know, it didn't even cross my mind. And then the, the just the sw crazy swirls on the top. I mean, it just, it's so, I, I don't even know how to explain it, you know? It's such a weird, um, it looks like something to me, these these kind of swirly weird patterns, but pretty cool. So, uh, you know, the coffee straws, uh, if you want to cast some of those, it looks like they're a good, you know, they're way better than straws. Uh, there's There was no um, bonding issue. Uh, it turned fine, uh, you know, all that kind of stuff. The one question is longevity and is there going to be any issue with you know, alcohol or moisture or whatever. Uh, one other thing to, to kind of note about these, um, I would probably recommend, we didn't put any finish on the bottom of this. I would probably recommend just, you don't need a lot, just just dab a little CA on, on a piece of paper towel and just kind of give it a couple wipes, you know, like wipe one on and then let it dry, wipe another layer and you should be fine just to make sure everything's, you know, nice and sealed up. But 
I don't know. I think I think they'll probably be fine. Like I said, I've I've done things with like pasta and other things that <laughs> probably shouldn't be around anything that that might get wet, you know, kind of thing could dissolve easily, and they worked fine. So anyway guys pretty cool and, and uh, actually i'll pull these guys out cut them up and these things will be up for grabs if anybody wants to to order um, those blanks that we just made um because they're not going to go in the, the i already i already sent this blank um these these guys the stoppers um out to the um the boxes this month so those are all gone so the four i don't think i can get six out of those but the four uh stopper blanks that i make they'll i'll probably post sometime we're in the middle of moving and things are going to be kind of crazy that's why i haven't been at all active on instagram or anything uh, but those will be up for grabs if anybody wants to grab some of those and it should be pretty cool so uh for the next week um because i i usually do shipping from my house so that kind of got interrupted i brought all the the products and everything out to the shop but it's kind of messed up here uh, like it's not set up so orders may be slightly delayed like a day or two. It's not that I, I won't get to them. It's just it may be kind of pushed back depending on what's going on. Not sure exactly what to expect the next, you know, like once we've moved in, I think we're going to have to kind of hammer down and, and get things kind of organized. So for a couple days, shipping may be a little bit kind of wonky, but it, it, it's probably only going to be like a day or two uh, late, I guess, the, compared to normal. So just to let you know about that stuff. Uh, but anyway, I think uh, I think that's about it. Uh, big thank you to everybody that super chatted. Good color choices as always. Um, I'll post uh, a little bit of a reel of, of of this thing on Instagram and probably on the YouTube Shorts pretty soon here. But I hope you guys all have a wonderful weekend, re or I guess rest of the weekend, and, and a great week next week. I'll kind of keep you guys up to date on what's going on if anything weird is going on with you know because of the move or anything like that i'll let you guys know uh, definitely sign up for the email newsletter on my website that's I, I send out if i do sales and all kinds of stuff there's a little bit more insider uh, information on on that email newsletter that doesn't sometimes get out to, to instagram or or on youtube or anything so check that out and links to the coffee straws to the the stoppers both the three and the four um, you can get the three band you know the three o-ring ones at turner's warehouse right now i'm pretty sure they're going to be carrying the four o-rings but they're available now the four o-rings at stainless bottle stoppers so i got everything linked down in the description of this video uh, but again thank you guys all for joining the fun have a wonderful week and have a great rest of the evening and i'll see you guys on the next stream